my gosh. We're back. We're back. We made it, babe. We made it to episode two. Was there ever a doubt? I mean, we made it 18 years of marriage. You thought yeah, we couldn't make it to this episode morning, two. I don't, I don't know. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, let me fill you in as to why I don't know if we were going to make it here or not. So, I just finished building this huge bathroom. It has two vanities, which are 15 feet apart, right? Purposely. Beautiful. Because you did a great I job. cannot use the same vanity as my wife. She just leaves a train wreck everywhere, right? <laughs> but with all of that, this huge bathroom, two vanities, she always ends up on my vanity. And this morning, she's there brushing her teeth, leaving all types of stuff on my vanity. And I, it just, I didn't, listen, we almost didn't make it here, okay? So, so I'm sure you'll agree with this. When you're married, it's not my vanity or your vanity. It's our vanities. So it's a community vanity? It's community vanities, baby. Community living. <laughs> I don't even know why. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to use the vanity wait, downstairs. Wait, wait, wait. That's what we're going to do. Hold up. Let, got, that's not what we came we here We have for. some amazing <laughs> guests today. You know them from Married to Medicine. Yes. But they are both successful in mm -hmm. their own right. Mm -hmm. Dr. Contessa and Dr. Scott Metcalf. Yes. And they're going to keep it all the way real with us. Look, no other way. I right. mean, because we're both Scorpios. Yes. And a lot of people, when they find that out, are like, huh, how is that supposed to work? So I would say when you have two really strong people, both mm -hmm. super successful, both breadwinners, like how is that? Both doctors. Yes. How does that work? Powerful, strong, smart doctors. But we're, we're going to talk to them in a minute. Yeah. They, they have a, a world of truth and mm -hmm. knowledge to share with us. But let me ask you this. In that vein. Okay. Did I'm not you, a doctor. No, no, I know. Well. Go ahead. You're a doctor of some things. Oh. You hear that? I got some. That, that's, what is it? That's the scope? Let me get a little sip, sip <laughs> over on that one. So, What's so the question? Here's, here's my question, and we'll talk to them about this as well, because okay. I know they have strong views. But when we first got married, as a matter of fact, when you proposed to me, mm -hmm. obviously you processed, this is my wife. Mm -hmm. Was it for love? Okay. Or was it because you thought I would be a good partner, like business partner? Was it a business decision? Honestly, it, it was the booty. No, just saying. <laughs> Um, Ma, you didn't mean that. You didn't mean that. <laughs> it definitely wasn't business because the way my credit was set up at the time, I don't think we would have worked because I had some financial issues. Wait, there. but I said me. like Right. I was thinking about you from me because I was like, she ain't going to want to be with this guy right here. I got to get this together. I was in the 500s, 560s, trying to work how, on it. How did, you, how did you get into fives? Well, so it wasn't that I was broke or anything. It's just that. You know, when you don't know, you don't know. So I wasn't paying on time, mm. one, right? And I was closing credit cards out too soon, thinking, let's just get rid of this, and, and I'm okay. And that's not the way credit works. working against me. Yeah. Okay, so when we first got together, um, I by then I had an 800-plus credit score. But I did share with him when I came out of school, my credit was in the fives as well because they were offering free keychains and T-shirts at school if you opened a credit mm -hmm. card. And that's before we really understood how it worked. Right. So I came out with like eight credit cards, maxed out, and worked to get myself for many years to the 800 range. And mm -hmm. I felt very solvent. So as fine as this man is, is kind and compassionate, a wonderful father, you know, and I knew that I fell in love with him. When he proposed to me, the first thing I thought about was his credit score. This one, but, and I told you that. Honestly, I was like, yeah. how are we going to buy property together? Wait, but, so wait, let me throw that back what? at you then. Did you marry me for business? No, I married you. Oh, sip on that? All right. Ladies Actually, and gentlemen. Actually, no, I'm playing. I'm playing. Listen, yeah, yeah. I married you for a whole heap of reasons. Okay. But the one thing we had to reconcile to do was work together so that we both had a good financial picture. Yes. And we leveraged my credit mm -hmm. to build his credit. Mm -hmm. And I think many people don't realize that's an option. Yeah. Yeah. And actually end relationships over finances versus working together to create a good financial picture as one. Yeah. So for instance, I had an American Express, right? A Platinum American Express, which allows for you to open other credit cards uh, for family members. Mm -hmm. You can do this for your children, for your husband, for your wife. And every time you pay on that card, your payment history, your success history credit-wise actually goes on their credit report as well. So there was, I think one, we kept tracking your credit report yep. and it was about six months in. His credit was better than mine. And I was like... You see me. <laughs> okay. I said, wait a minute. How did that happen? Right. But... 
But again, it didn't matter that what his credit score was, what my credit score mm -hmm. once was. We designed that we wanted to be together for love, which right. is why ultimately we right. married, and we had to do the work financially to get to where we could both be good business partners yes. on assets together, mm -hmm. on businesses together. Yes. Right? You know, but when I hear you say that, there's so much that comes to my mind as well, babe. One, gentlemen, it didn't make me any less of a man to allow my wife to allow me to use her credit to leverage mine. Did you get to what I said when I said all of that? And it was my idea. I came to him with it. And mm -hmm. we both had the common goal of if we're going to be together, it doesn't matter who whose credit we use to make sure we're on equal playing field, Yeah. right? Um, so fill the people in on our theme today, though. Oh, so, no, you fill them in. It's marriage struggles. Ma no, it's not marriage struggles. Yes, it is. That's not what the card said. I ain't reading what the card said. This, the card said power struggles. Same thing. Within marriage the marriage. is power. And choosing a partner, is it a business decision? Right. And our next guest, Dr. Contessa and Dr. Scott Metcalf, mm -hmm. believe marriage is a business decision. We want to hear more about this, right? All right, so let's welcome them. Hey guys, what's going on? How y'all doing? First and foremost, Dr. MC Scott. <laughs> and you knew about that, huh? I knew about oh. it. I knew about it. Listen, we're going to put on a show one day. You'll be out front and I'll be on the DJ set. You know, we might pack the house, sell out some tickets. Yeah, Let's do it. I, I'm not I'll be afraid. the background dancer. So wait, and we wait, got wait. background dancers. <laughs> oh, wait, was that, and, was, and beauty. Was that, like, <laughs> was that like just for kicks on the show or do you really rap on the side? You know what? What have I, I, you know, I would like to say I really rap on the side because I've been doing it for a long I'm time. I'm just going to keep feeding them, um, yeah. feeding the beast. Yeah, so, so we're going to get you to rap a verse for us before you leave. Oh, Babe, they're trying to look. stay together. No, okay. so there we look. go. Yeah, yeah. So okay. saying, no, our first <laughs> house, no joke, our first house together, he actually renovated the basement and put a whole studio in there. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. So he literally, he's he's a writer okay. in yeah. life. Like okay. he writes songs. He had books and books of songs. And so I had to tell him, some of them are like, you know, songs are like one or two or three words, uh -huh. and then you go yeah, into the next. Like, no, no, he was like a poem. Mm. You know, they I, 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 I want to hear so one. So he's gotten I, way better. I feel like, like this will set the tone for us having fun. Yeah. Just give us a verse. Of, so, come on. A verse? Give it to uh -oh. us. Can I give a verse one of verse. the one that we just released for the Whatever. show? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Do I need to sing the hook, or are you going to sing the hook? Now, Paige, we'll be the oh, now so Paige and Dr. Actually, Scott. I, did. I, I convinced her to do the intro for my song. Yeah, Come on. I told him so I, I, get, I want my 10% too, yeah. by the way. But now Paige and Dr. Scott. <laughs> <laughs> so, and this song was from when we was going through some problems. Okay. And uh, so I was like, my goal is to never have you leave me again. I'm doing everything it takes for you to let me back in. Mm. Girl is so lonely in this storm. Don't want to blow in the wind. I need you to exhale, and I'll start breathing again. Woo! Yeah, so. Ooh, that, that had levity. Mm -hmm. so. Right. That was good yeah. stuff. Yeah. I'm about to turn the metronome on. Can I be, on. Can I be your slave? Oh. I got to admit, boy. Nice. <laughs> nice. Boy. I love it. Y'all are, are a fun couple. You are. What, what I love about you, and thank you guys for accepting the invitation to come yes. to this show. Because oh, you, you know we're going to keep it real. Yes. We're going to keep it transparent mm -hmm. in the spirit of wanting to inspire others, yes. of course. Um, but what, what I love about you guys is... When you you did not let reality TV pull you apart, it mm. almost did. It, but you say it kept you together. Definitely, I would say a lot of people say that. So I I would say one thing that our problem has always been because you know you of course your family dynamic mm -hmm. is really a manifestation of your individual family dynamics, mm. right? Mm. So if you're a family that you have a problem and y'all just kind of go into our respective corners and the next day y'all act like nothing ever happened then you don't really talk about issues, right? Mm -hmm. And so me, I'm a kind of an over-communicator. And I was like, tomorrow, I don't want to act like nothing happened. I want to talk about what happened. He's like, that was yesterday. Let it go. Mm. And so we'd have these things that we would never address. Reality television does not allow you to do that. And in life, like when I have conflict for real, like mm -hmm. with my friends and mm -hmm. stuff, I like, I'm sorry, I walk away. But on you know, television, they want you to hash everything out. Mm -hmm. And that's what it made us kind of start doing. And when we started to even see some of the pathological things that we were doing because it was played back, right? right? You know, sometimes you'll say, no, you said this or you yeah. did this. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's no real evidence, right? right. right. <laughs> we have the right. video. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we yeah. got to Roll see. Roll that back. Roll that back. Roll Roll back. And we were like, oh, I did that. Mm. You're right. I do do that sometimes. So what, what were you doing constantly that you were able to see? <sighs> so I have a couple of things that I do. I'm from 
series of divorced people. You know, my mom was divorced, my grandmother. I don't think I never knew really a grandfather. Mm -hmm. And even my mom's, um, my mom's whole side of the family, like nobody knew their fathers. Okay. My father was like the first father that was known. My dad's mom and dad got divorced when I was like they were fifty something and got divorced. So everybody was like strong women. So in our relationship, it would always be like, you know, what I'm saying? I, just break up. Let's just mm -hmm. break up. And I said it a lot. That was the your recourse. You would just yes. back mm -hmm. up to that every time something went yes. wrong. Yes, a fight would always. Oh. And you, 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 we don't need. To, we don't have to do this. Like yeah. we can just break up, because that was to me like conflict meant that we weren't designed to be together. Is that because that's what you saw or what you felt? I never saw people work conflict out. Mm. Like it was just conflict and then they broke up. So they, I never saw people get to the other side of that. How, how, would, you re that. how, how would you respond to that? You know, and my household was different. My father passed when I was young mm -hmm. and I'm the youngest of 10 kids. Okay. So, and we all had the same five parents. And uh, so with the- Wait a minute, I, mom, same mom parents both? Yeah. Ten kids. Mom was a superhero. Yeah, she definitely, gave definitely was a superhero. Yeah. Definitely was a superhero. Wow. And, and so, they're matriarchs and patriarchs. Like there's pictures of them everywhere. Like this, you know, and their grandfathers. And it's like that kind yes. of, you know, that black family where you mm -hmm. see like the great, 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 great. Yeah. Yeah. That was. Yeah. And so with ours, you know, now transitioning to, we can, you know, I might have to have a drink if I start talking about my <laughs> stepfather. So I, you know, so yeah, so like, yeah, like stepfather. I had the whole horrible stepfather okay. thing growing up. And, I witnessed like somebody staying in the marriage that shouldn't have stayed in the marriage, mm. you know? And so that was, we bringing both of those dynamics into our marriage. And uh, I think, you know, of course we had to go mm -hmm. through counseling. Mm -hmm. So that's what kind of helped gel us together and say, your family dynamic does not have to be our family right. dynamic. And that's where we kind of turned around. Is it safe to, go ahead, baby. No, you go. Is it safe to say just by listening to your upbringing that neither of you had the right representation or the tools to know how to make a relationship work properly. At all. At all. At all. Okay. And Definitely. didn't even know that that was a thing. Mm. Like it's, especially in this kind of current world, right? We're taught that, you know, it was like, we get married much older. Mm. That's number one, right? So it was already, like I said, our first home together. I'd already bought a duplex and flipped it in DC, you know, when I was in my residency. And then I bought a condo. He had his own huge, big old house. Mm -hmm. and. I mean, so we had like several homes when we got married. And then we even talking about how you guys were saying earlier, having, you know, the first house that we bought here was in my name because he had houses in his name. Mm -hmm. And so it was like we already had this whole your stuff, my stuff. And then he had this family because it's 10 of them. And so when he would say family, it took a very long time for he to, him to mean me. Gotcha. Right. Okay. It was so it was just a lot of that. Right. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of understanding how to reframe like being adults and not like lose my autonomy. And mm -hmm. even like, for instance, I was in the Navy, right? So he would come on base and they would say, Dr. Gray. And like, oh, you're Dr. Gray's husband. So you're Mr. Gray. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, no, she's actually <laughs> Dr. Metcalf, right? <laughs> right, 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 and right. So even that, it just, and it was like, change your name and mm -hmm. just, you, you're you a part of my family. And mm -hmm. it just, it was so many different elements of like, I feel like what does can, that mean? We, we can relate you know? to that a little bit yeah. though, because yeah. when we first got together, People would say, oh, that's Egypt's husband. Mm -hmm. And it bothered me. Yeah. But I didn't realize how, how much it bothered. really bothered. It yeah. bothered me. I was like, no, that's my husband, Mike. Yeah. 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 And then one time somebody said it, hey, Egypt's husband. Like, not even trying to say his name. He's like, yo, Mike. <laughs> my name is <laughs> that's right. Right. I'm Mike right. Jackson. And there we actually go. do the same damn thing. Right. So how right. about that? Right. Exactly. 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 Yeah, yeah. No. But, uh, you know, I, I think... When we look at you guys, yeah. when we, when the, when the world looks at you mm -hmm. guys, we see, wow, success, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But there's such a story behind the yeah, glory. Absolutely. And when I say success, I think, you know, there's a whole generation that prayed that their kids grew up to be doctors, yeah. mm -hmm. prayed that their kids finished mm -hmm. school and bought houses and had assets and, you know, married well, if mm -hmm. you will. Right. And so, so leaning into that a bit, marrying well, I understand that, for you, marriage was a business decision. So can we go there? Wait, when you say you, which one? <laughs> well, so, I, did she say that? Oh, yeah. Okay, I you mean, didn't know that? I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, but I'm still good. You heard it here I, first. Look, 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 look. <laughs> look. Okay, okay. All right, you know what's so, up. You know what's up. Y'all know what's up. Y'all know what's up. This, there it this, is. So no, I, we don't know what's up. Tell okay. us what's up. Let's so I came up in business and in love. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Okay, I'll take it. You did. So you married for love. 
Well, I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. I'm married well, for love, but I think I'd strategically pick. Well, I mean, I met her and I fell heads over heels for her first. Mm-hmm. Well, right? she's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, no, no. Don't okay. tell the truth. Okay. Oh, you know, but yeah, I did. Put a pin in. That. I was no, we never no, put. No, 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 ain't no pin. Ain't no pins going nowhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, what was that about? So let's so, back up. Okay. To our our love story. So mm-hmm. we were long distance. Our whole entire courtship until an entire year after we had been married. Okay. So the first time we cohabitated, we were already married for a whole year. For a year. And so we didn't even get to know each other till we were already like, you know, like know legally. Each other. And you've been married eighteen other, no. years. Now? Eighteen. 18, years. Yep, 18. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it was tough. It was really really tough. And even, you know, that whole like we were talking about the business decision. It was. I had to really kind of. I was older, right? I was thirty almost when and he was. Yeah. Yeah. So he's and he's a, a little bit older than me. If twenty eight is old, what's forty? That's what I'm saying. 46? You know. She's right. Saying she was well, older. because again, we go to medical school, mm-hmm. so I was a doctor already. Mm-hmm. So at that point, I was like a professional, and I was like, look, it wasn't. I wasn't kind of at the beginning of my career, mm-hmm. right? And so, and same for him. And I knew that for me to get with somebody who met me as a doctor. I would always question and wonder what their motives were, mm-hmm. right? And it was challenging because I was in I was always in serious relationships. Now he was always in serious relationships. Lies. <laughs> Lies. He was in them streets. Like matter of fact, when I went to his house to meet his mom the first time, his mother was like, uh, so when you gonna have a baby for my son? Boom. That's what she, she said. Knew, to me. She knew she was the one. Ain't it that came nice? out of nowhere that question. But I was like, ma'am, I'm my name is doctor like who you like I just was like I'm the wife I'm not the baby mama yeah. like what are you saying to me and so that was what he was like it was almost like this is this is the doctor who's going to snap that's the because doctor. I told my mom she was the one that's so not that true. was oh, it so you said that's she, not true oh, yeah, no everybody knew she Which was one? the one before so she even came your uh-huh. side her side is the truth <laughs> no, no my side is using the truth my side sisters, is using the truth and his sister was like do not let him do you like he did them other girls okay oh, don't ouch. let him play them games with you like if he's Wait, not so this showing all you happened his, that first it's commuting going back and because again we had the like island romance because he was in Michigan and I was in Missouri I'm from Kansas City and then I went to med school okay and so we were commuting back and forth. And so we would have these wonderful, like, weekends. Vacations, yeah. mm-hmm. Basically, like, this, you know, whirlwind fake romance because you don't really get to know somebody on a weekend right. trip or right. going on a vacation yeah. with them for a week. But we thought we did. But I would finally come up to his house and met his siblings and stuff. And his sisters was kind of like, mm, girl, you know, put your foot down. Don't let him do you like he mm-hmm. do everybody else. Because they knew what you did. It was know. a parade of, apparently it had been a parade of people. <laughs> they were like, they were like, I'm the youngest and I'm spoiled. That's He's, what they were right, talking about. Right. Yeah. And so for me, though, I was like, you know, I'm thinking we're serious. Mm-hmm. And we were like serious, but serious for a long distance relationship if you know what okay. I'm trying to say okay and so it was more of his mom was like okay now he's getting a little older so when are you gonna have a baby like so forget marriage forget he's not gonna get married she maybe be a grandma she's just ready to yeah. get, be a grandma and that's what kind of also no, gave no. me a little red she, flags oh so he just be bringing girls up to meet the mom I and mean, he just brings a parade and, of and that, that definitely didn't happen that definitely didn't happen no you ain't got to throw a life raft Wait, so, so from so, your perspective. Okay. okay. Yeah. Tell the truth. So from my perspective was, I was like, you know what? I've been knowing this girl for like three years. We've been cool every time I see her. And then we just start talking over the last three to six months. And I was like, this the one. Mm-hmm. Like, if you ask it, my best friends, it? my what brothers, her, I mean, it was just the personality. One, we just clicked. I mean, we literally, we would have great conversations on the phone. So, mm-hmm. you know, so that was a good way of knowing, getting to learn each other. And uh, it was just, she had that it factor for me. They it say was, a it was man it. knows his yeah, wife. You knew it. Yeah. You knew it. Yeah. Did you yeah. know? You already know I knew. Yeah. I just wanted <laughs> to hear you say it. I, I wanted yeah. to hear you say it. Look, uh, I'm going to get back to that question, but yeah. a month in, yeah. after dating, I asked her, outside of Madison Square Garden, Rain, and I said, listen, a month in, would you marry me? Right, and I said not at this second, but when the time comes, <laughs> well, you and I asked you, you, you going to be, he was like, right, 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 right. I'm just seeing you so, on that list. I you knew, the top. I knew. <laughs> now we asked the quote unquote proposition question, meaning, did you get into marriage as a business or love? Sure. You answered to some extent. You started to answer, okay. but didn't get deep enough. So when I when I looked at again, I had already known some of the variables because of the fact my mom was divorced previously, Mm -hmm. right? And my dad, you know, my dad had like a really kind of spotty past. He was on drugs and we grew up in a very tenuous, a financially tenuous home. 
and my mom and my dad, my dad was a truck driver, and my mom worked at the post office. So on paper, they had good jobs, mm -hmm. but we never had any money because we spent every single thing that we made. And so for me, it was really important to have financial security, mm -hmm. right? And I knew that that was going to be a life that I could, I could not live in that level of uncertainty. And I'm a saver, like that's me, I'm a give, save, spend person. Mm. And I, when we actually met, I remember him saying, you know, we talked about like student loans. Mm -hmm. I actually used to teach even financial classes and teach people how to budget and plan. And I said, Scott. She did the whole Dave Ramsey, Ramsey yeah. leadership <laughs> entrepreneur for an hour or whatever. I said, yeah. she, she, I said, she did it. Scott, you got student loans. We're going to pay them off mm -hmm. in 13 months. Mm -hmm. I'm talking medical school loans and everything. $200,000. We paying them off. I only had 60 when I met you, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I had. I, yeah. Y'all tell two different, very yeah. different. No, no, she knows. Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, actually, actually, I had forty-eight to be specific, but because uh, I, I did the National and Health Service Corps to, to pay my loans back, and she did the military to pay her loans back. Well, so we, we all kind, yeah, because she had the military. But I did the National Health Service Corps, mm -hmm. where I worked at an underserved clinic, and they paid my student loans. They paid me a lump sum every year, which is the reason why we hold on. Which is the reason why. We commuted for one year because I had a contract obligation that said until October 4th, I would have to pay back that 40000 that they gave mm -hmm. me for that year for student loans, cash, no taxes. Mm -hmm. And so I moved to Atlanta on October 9th. So four days, four or five days after I finished that commitment, mm -hmm. I left the practice and I moved down here to Atlanta. But what we still didn't hear. Okay, so the financial part. So what I <laughs> so, yeah, so no, but yeah. When when he said, "Will you marry me?" Oh yeah. Was it for love, or was it because you said, "You know what? I can build with him. This Both. is a good." Both. Uh, Go so because I, I'll be honest. He wasn't the first person to ask me to marry him. He wasn't. You knew that. Yeah, he knew. Yeah, yeah, I knew. Okay. Yeah, he definitely yeah. knew. But just checking. Just checking. I, but I knew that that was very important to me, and so. What, again, going back to him being like very com about that, of the compliance of that, because mm -hmm. again, I was in grew up in a home where people would put car payments on credit cards. Mm -hmm. They would put bills on credit cards, so that's like interest mm -hmm. on top of interest. Right. Or they would need tires and put it on a credit card, and then I need a new some new tires and then go buy a new car because the payment was less than the lump sum of the repair. Mm -hmm. And so I was always thinking about the big debt versus what's this monthly payment because I wanted to, debt scares me a lot mm -hmm. of on a lot of people and so he was in the same kind of in that same vein and he was also into understanding about empire and wealth building I want I mm. want to I want to dig into that a little yeah. bit and lean into that well a few things I heard from what yeah. you just said is you grew up in a family where people were putting everything on the credit card yeah. and there was no financial solvency what that translates to with, with you looking for a husband or choosing who you were going to marry and not necessarily looking for somebody with money, but looking with, for someone who was responsible. For sure. Mm -hmm. With money is, I think, we're always looking for a safe place yeah, mm -hmm. to sure. land. And no, for sure. it's, what is your love language? Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this a yep. lot, babe. For me, my love language is feeling safe me too. and protected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, it, when I know that you're planning forward and you've got us covered financially, then I can rest a little bit. Right. Because I don't want to be an alpha no. woman. Right. Let's go there, yeah. right? Are you an alpha woman? Thousand percent. Oh, we can already see that. So even so, yeah. so yeah. that's yeah. not yeah. a bad thing, it's right? Because right. in thing. my head, because again, like one thing I'm really good at, which I also really appreciate it, is the numbers thing, right? Because I can tell you down to the penny of how much we owe for anything, mm -hmm. and it bothers me. Like seriously, like if you were to buy a cup of coffee for me because I forgot my credit card, I would literally cash out it to you because I hate. Mm -hmm. Owing, owing anybody, yeah. anybody, yeah. anything. It just yeah. drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. I'll give you your money back and a tip. Exactly. Right. That's her. Right. But, That's her. But, it was, but because he's from that big family and a small town, it's a little different for him because he didn't grow up with that insecurity because they didn't need a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But in Kansas City, right, everything was expensive. We mm -hmm. didn't have public, like you couldn't walk anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I was always worried about like Chicken Little, like about the sky falling mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. being... It's so crazy. I'm a doctor. Right. Even now, I still will sometimes perseverate about being broke or homeless. Mm -hmm. Homeless. Okay, like, so you why and I would, are the same right? person. Okay, okay. we're, we're really? the same person. Okay. Just like yeah. I'm not alone. So no, you're not. He's like, what are you together. talking about? Yeah. I just feel like we need to. <laughs> okay. we need to go I know, ahead. right? We crazy. Oh, <laughs> let me tell you. 
I know. I know. Like, maybe you're gonna, yeah, maybe, I my thought that is, was just a My name Gemini, is Scott, and I'm married to him. But this, is <laughs> this is such an important yeah. conversation to it have, is. right? Not just for us, but for those who are watching, yeah. who are in this. Like, we... We strive for success. We right. strive for you know, being financially secure. We want to build a better world for our children. Yeah. But what happens sometimes is women, when we don't feel safe, when we don't feel that we're in a relationship or with somebody who... Why are you looking at me like that? I'm going, I'm going to be safe hey, with my no, words. No, okay. no, 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 do. <laughs> but but when, when we don't feel safe, what happens is our masculine comes That's out. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to rest in the soft life. Yeah. We want to stay in the feminine. We want to be soft and girly and, like, let you mm -hmm. open our doors and let you do all of this. But if we feel that it's not on the level that we we can provide for ourselves, what happens is our testosterone, our man comes That's right. out. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. Everybody has a feminine and a masculine mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. It's not where we want to live. No. That's not where we want to exist. Am I right? That's right. right. Understand. Right? right. Yep. But, but it is, and I think it comes from, my mom for, for many years was a single mother before my stepfather came into the picture, and he's an amazing man that raised us, and our family awesome. could not be where we are without mm -hmm. my dad, okay? That. He was my dad. Uh, but, but with that said, I watched women, like, super serve. I watched women come to the table having to fill their cup and everybody else's cup at the table, and so what happens is where we're lacking, we overcompensate, right. and it translates as masculine. So Mike says to me one day, because we were having a very troubled time in our relationship, mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, why are we fighting? Why are, why are we here? Like, we clearly love each other. We want to be together. And God told me, shut up. Like, <laughs> that's the first time I heard it, like, really loud. God's like, shut up and let him talk. Mm -hmm. And then he did. This is just me shutting up was like a safe place for him to talk. And I didn't realize how yeah. much I over project. Mm -hmm. And he says, you're mannish. Mm -hmm. And the first instinct as a woman, oh, mm -hmm. y'all relate. Mm-hmm. First, yeah, really. <laughs> first instinct, you know, is like, huh? Like, yeah. how dare yeah. But then I I'm thankful for being able to hear that voice so loud. It was like, just listen. And To the viewers listening, manage does not mean she's coming off looking like a man, smells no. like a man, no. or is giving off man traits. It's, 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 an, it's a feeling. It's a vibe. It's an emotion. For instance, you know, femininity or a feminine vibe or a touch that men like it was lacking, mm -hmm. right? So it wasn't saying, oh, you sound like a man or you look like a man, you act like a man. No, man is just a somewhat of a slang that's used saying there's a lack of femininity, but feminine energy. What you said to me that day, because I wanted him to describe, and I want to hear from you guys on this too, because mm -hmm. yeah, I see you yeah, holding yeah, hands sure. and bonding over that. Um, what he said to me was, you're, you're not leaving room for mm -hmm. me. I know you can do this. I know you can do that and do mm -hmm. that, but I want to do this for you and I want to provide and I want to open doors and I want to date you and all but you're not leaving room and I was just very much in my masculine energy not realizing but it was also because I, ex I executive produce our show mm -hmm. so when we went into filming season I went into my boss mode mm -hmm. and it's you have to know when to turn it off right. and that I wasn't part. turning it off right. I wasn't doing a good job so right. I was grateful instead of defensive for him telling me and stepping into his truth mm -hmm. right of this is what i need I and that. i need you to back off <laughs> let mm -hmm. me let me be who i need to be i want to be for you as well which is really what i want right because it ends up and then it's like a domino effect so the lack of femininity which quote unquote mannishness of it all tends to be unattractive right so it's not you know you'll get those moments where you're like why haven't you touched me? Or why haven't you? It's not that I don't think you're sexy and I think you're attractive. It's just that I'm not attracted to you right now because you're coming off so mannish. Yeah. Right? So and so as that happens over time, it becomes to where it's like, you know, resentment comes into play and other things come into play. And you're like, what's going on? Right. But right? I'd rather you tell me than go act out in the oh, streets. Oh, for sure. Oh, oh no, for sure. Or tell everybody else, and I don't know what's going mm -hmm. on. Yeah. But what did that mean to you when I brought that up? Because I saw a whole body language yeah. shift. Go ahead. Well, you, you say it. Oh, uh, just, it's just. <laughs> You know, it, it is. It's about the energy that we project on one another. Yeah. And uh, I remember one time during counseling, she was getting everything off her chest. And then the counselor just stopped and said, Scott, breathe. <laughs> She's like, you're not over there. You're not even breathing. And she was like, okay, Contessa, it's time to just relax and then let him say mm -hmm. what's on his chest. And we kind of almost had the same uh, conversation. Yeah. And it was like, you know, like, okay, you know, sometimes you got to feel like you're being heard, mm -hmm. you know, and then we got to sit back and listen. And 
I mean, it all boils down to communication. Yeah. And then we all know, everybody at the table knows that marriage is hard work. Oh, yeah. But it's worth it. Yeah, it is. And it's and constant I, I will work. say definitely in this relationship, I know that this hard work is worth it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. and, and it was for me, it's a lot of, you know, I think a lot of it for everybody is all about childhood trauma, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was also going from a space where when I let, I saw my mom kind of let my father handle stuff, right? And he lost his job. And so then we had two or three mortgages on a house, mm -hmm. right? And so he didn't handle the business. And so then there was a fallout of him not handling the business. And so I was almost projecting some of that and not trusting. Like he would fall like my dad did, mm -hmm. right? And put us in a situation where we could almost lose everything, right? And that's what I, he was like, we're not even close to that place. That's right? not the man that that's he not is. His, that's not him. Right. Like, and, and it's just crazy. Like, what are you even talking about? Right. But that's how <laughs> I felt. Like, if I let it if I let it go, then it's possible that you'll drop the ball. Mm -hmm. And the dropping the ball, we got kids, we got... And I, it's crazy. And but it, you went to therapy. And yeah. I, I love that you admit that because I think the T word. Yeah. <laughs> you oh, know? my so God. Oh, for man. Like, Did yeah. you go to yeah. therapy? But it's listen, if something's broken in our body, yeah. we go to the doctor mm -hmm. to get it fixed, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Why can't we, if the marriage feels broken, if the relationship, the person feels broken, mm -hmm. why can't we go to try and fix it? But now with everything you shared, how did mm -hmm. you guys get to where you are now to clearly there's love and affection mm -hmm. yeah. and, you know, an appreciation for one well, another? What what you gonna? No, I was gonna say before they tell us how we got there. Mm -hmm. What even got you into counseling? Like, what was that low point? Well, I think I always say with, to couples, you gonna go to counseling before you get married, or you gonna go to counseling while you're married, mm -hmm. or you gonna go to counseling or after both. you break up. Mm -hmm. But you need to go to counseling probably before to mm -hmm. even figure out if you're in the right mm -hmm. marriage in the space to get married. Mm -hmm. But I would say, you know, we had been going back and forth, oscillating in counseling for several reasons, like. I think the first time that we went into counseling, I, I lost, we had a, uh, um, we lost our first child. We had, the baby was born too early, long story short. Sorry. And so it was really tragic because it was kind of like, it was really unexpected. And it just, the way he was mourning and the way I was mourning was, it was, I was mad at him. Cause I'm like, why aren't you, as up? he was going to work. And I was like, I couldn't get it together. I couldn't see people with babies, which is of course the world. And mm -hmm. it was just a lot. And so he kind of moved on and recovered a little bit faster. And I think that was the first time that we were like, okay, we're going to break up. Because I was so angry, not at him, mm -hmm. but at what had happened. Mm -hmm. But I was taking it out on him, mm -hmm. right? And so then we had, you know, kind of felt like we got through that. And then we, you know, needed to go through counseling a couple of more times. But we should have really made it to be about a new way that we adapt in the way we communicate as mm -hmm. opposed to getting through a moment. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what... At that, I think last year in particular, we have felt like, okay, we've done counseling like three or four times now. But again, it was almost like going to a car dealership and getting a repair on your vehicle. Right. It wasn't like I was doing maintenance. We yeah. hadn't been doing the maintenance. We just only dealt You're with the, the patchwork. Issue. Yeah, we just only dealt with whatever the issue mm -hmm. was. We fix it, and then we go back to our regular way right. of modus mm -hmm. operandi, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And that's what we needed to do. We needed to figure out a way to communicate for sustainability. And that gotcha. was the first time we ever did that. I have so many questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm trying to formulate because you, you just gave so much to yeah. us and you guys really are sharers. So mm -hmm. thank you for yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. And I wasn't a share. So <laughs> that, that, yeah, I, I, I wasn't a share. Is that like, what you saw when that's, you watched I mean, yourself back on TV? That's what I found out through counseling. That's what I found <laughs> okay. out through talking to her mm -hmm. is that you don't share, you close up and you mm -hmm. go by yourself. Mm -hmm. And you I know? felt lonely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I, I know that. Yeah. I understand that. Why, did, why didn't you want to share? Why would you go into I just, a space of clothes? Because I never, like she said, I think it goes back. I never want to have a hard conversation. Mm -hmm. You, you know, just want so to avoid it, just want to avoid it, it, smooth out, smile mm -hmm. in the morning, you know, and so, yeah. That I, sounds like somebody we know. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's a man thing. <laughs> that sounds like, <laughs> like someone no, we know. No, no, no. The reason why I ask, no, it's not a man thing. So I threw this out there several times before in certain conversations. So, they, and I don't know your past, right? But certain people's past where they used to be lashing out whenever mm -hmm. you got into a conversation with their past significant other, or you just handle you know, conversations wrong. So for me, my thing was knowing that that was my past where I would lash out or I would curse you out. I said, now I'm in a space to where is, let me digest this. I'm not going to answer you right now, but let me digest this. It's not that I'm closing in or saying I don't want to talk mm -hmm. about it right now, but I need to and I'm like pull you. this apart and 
I'm an over communicator. Mm -hmm. So one time we had a, a really big fight. It was probably a defining moment in our relationship of we gonna go left or we gonna go right. We gotta press a reset though. But I was I kept coming at him because I wanted answers and I wanted explanation mm -hmm. and I wanted conversation and you're going to deal with this right now. Right now. And he op he ran to the front door and ran out the house and ran down the street. See, and I don't I know did about not running. See him. You ran. I may have did a and, cool walk. <laughs> You babe, but you were out. <laughs> with no track shoes, you were like running the pen relays. And I was like, where's he going? And, it, and that upset me even more. It was like, did you just run away from this? We got to deal with this. And I'm shouting down the street. Our neighbors think we're crazy, right? <laughs> Come back. You're going to deal with this right now. And but But when he came back, he explained to me, you have a different way of processing you need to communicate in the moment and deal with it then. He says, I have to process and digest so I can come back to the table with solutions and so that I, I won't come to you with anger. Yeah. He says, I never want to be angry to the point of where I feel like I'm done and I never want to be angry to the point where I feel like I got to like shake you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I was like, you better not shake me. But, <laughs> right. but I was appreciative of that. And honestly, we've been married for a long time. Even at that point, it never hit me. Mm -hmm. The way he processes is entirely different from the way I process. And I have to respect, respect his that. process. And not, in one way, it's mm -hmm. not better than the other mm -mm. one. Yeah, that's, we had to come to that yeah. as well, I think. So now you, you got all this going on. Yes. And you decide to bring it on TV. Uh, <laughs> well, I feel like the TV brought it brought out. it out because you, you know the interesting thing about tv because people you know it's funny because people are like something happened last year well mm, they choose what they show mm -hmm. right and i it's been so many times that i'm just kind of like god i hope they don't show that and they don't mm. they don't and the good thing about reality television is they decide what they think is interesting mm -hmm. and it was a kind of a series of unfortunate events that i think that really was like oh okay this is juicy let's put this on there mm -hmm. and it wasn't so just our little bickering and our like disconnects because you know the year before they showed that i had been going back and forth to nashville for a couple of years right i think they showed it on on tv time it mm -hmm. was one year but it was actually two okay mm -hmm. and that was kind of a separation for us you know and we were getting prepared to live separate lives mm -hmm. in my opinion and it was really like after that time period, we were both trying to decide, are we still in it? And I think last year was kind of, we had then come back to Atlanta. I was back in, full time in Atlanta and it was like, mm, what are we gonna do? Right. And we had, I think both of us had come to the decision that, I don't know, I can't speak for you, but I think we had kind of come to the decision that we gonna be all right, just mm -hmm. co-parenting. Mm -hmm. And it was only, I think after, the show showed us some of the maladaptive ways that we were communicating and even showing that we hadn't really given it our all, that maybe there was something left if we did at least try, right. that we even went back to therapy. Mm -hmm. But okay. we were both, I think, you know, like I said, last year they, they choose to show what they like, right? Mm -hmm. right? And so they, may, they kind of highlighted, you know, my like anger and then like made him to me look bad. And I think if they would have shown the full story, mm -hmm. I think both of us would have looked bad. And exactly. they would have, and if they would have even shown that for the two years that I was going back and forth, that this just didn't come out of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, right. if you don't like really live yeah. full time in the same household for two years, then it's probably inevitable that you're gonna break up. Because actually, they said, and that was this is a data thing. This is a science thing. Living separating is horrible for marriage. The worst thing you could ever do if you're considering staying together mm -hmm. is breaking up because mm -hmm. once you break up, you broke up. Mm. And then the rules kind of change. If you separate it, can you be with somebody else? Right. Right? Can you buy, right? Can you cohabitate with somebody else? And what's it look like? If so we're there's not no together? one foot in, one foot no. out. Right. You, you either all that, in yeah. or you it. all out. And, and that's where you, that's, that's, that's kind of the turning pass. point. That's mm -hmm. the turning point where you say, no, nah, I don't think I'm going to move out. You know, mm -hmm. so like we even had that discussion, like, you know, mm -hmm. is the time? Okay. And uh, and that was, I think that was an aha moment. It's like, no, it's not the time. Yeah. You know, and uh, and it's time to put the work in. Y'all been exactly. battle tested now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For oh, sure. Yeah. yeah for battle sure. Oh, and, yeah. and for people to be able to watch it all play out on TV yeah. and for you to get to the brink like that. Mm hmm and then them see that you're still together. Yeah. You're still in love. Y'all are still building. I think, you know, even though you would think it makes people feel like, oh, it's salacious and they're mm -hmm. not successful. Actually, no. People are now deriving their inspiration for working it out in their marriage right. for watching how you did it. Right. 
I, it, listen, perfect does not exist. No, it doesn't. No. No. That's not why we start the show mm -hmm. saying we ain't perfect. Nope. <laughs> we are not experts, nope. and we don't want to try to be because that doesn't leave room for you to grow. Mm -hmm. Right. And you said something, and it was interesting because when you said success, I, I meant to touch this earlier. That was a problem for me because when I thought success, it was always professional and mm. financial. Mm -hmm. And I felt like both of us were successful, so there is no skin in the game for us. We're going to be all right, mm -hmm. right? You're going to be good. I'm going to be good. We can live in the same neighborhood. You can buy a house down the street or I buy a house down the street, or we can just sell this one and still buy a house in the same neighborhood. So that's what I think was actually a burden on us even really diving full in mm -hmm. because we were successful. So in essence, there was this undertone of we don't need each other. Mm -hmm. And humans need each other. Yes, we do. And that was something that I would say was a pathological thing that truly I had to break. And it just, I think it broke last year mm -hmm. because it's not about only financial and professional nope. success. No. And this actually makes me feel more successful than I've ever felt before. Oh. Because I, this is different, you know. Yeah. Th you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like even, even if I didn't have all the degrees and you know and money, it would just honestly. This is so important. You think about mm -hmm. the most important things in your life, are the biggest achievements and the biggest accomplishments. It would never be my marriage right. at the beginning or at the top, and now it is. Right. Now it is. Yeah, it's, it. it's powerful. You know, powerful. So, so before, I mean, this has been amazing and honest. Yes. And before we let you guys go. Because you, <laughs> because you guys, are, I mean, y'all just run a gamut. You have your nutraceuticals company yeah, with your vitamins have, and supplements. Yep. You guys have a, have a successful clinic. You're mm -hmm. both super educated. <laughs> yes. You know, just nice people oh, as well. And you're raising you. a family together. Mm -hmm. And all of that is inspiration. But this is marriage and money. Yes, it so is. So sure. we want to know from you some money tips. Yeah. If you only had three things that you could tell somebody real quick, in and out, this is what you need to know about mm -hmm. your money or what you need to be doing right now. I should just defer this whole conversation no, to her. No, 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 but she she no, is the brains no, of this operation. No, no, I'll be no. honest. But that's the okay, but but, but definitely, definitely. So think, yeah. I mean, because like I say, I, she was like, "What are you doing with this money in your account? And you have debt, you know." When and so she was like, "We've been putting this money in the account. We're paying off your student loans, whatever's of whatever's left, and we're paying off all." So it was a thing about the whole debt snowball. Mm -hmm. So with like she said, within what thirteen months. If she said, you paying off all these student loans. And I was like, I'm not paying off all these student loans. I got an easy, you know, payment. I'll just double them up. And she was like, no, we're going to pay them all. So paying off debt early, not accumulating unnecessary debt. You know, I mean, of course, we've done a lot. We've done real estate together. And, you know, everybody, I believe, lost a few back in between 2005, 2010. Mm -hmm. You know, when we you hit the recession. You only lose when you sell. That's only, right. Yep, that's yep. it. Yep. And so, but. You know, and so just making the smart business decisions and really, uh, I'll be honest, our only bad decisions came when I did not keep her advice. That's so honest. And, and I don't want to get hit and That's bring so up some honest. bad, you know, I don't want to bring up so what Dr. happened. So Dr. Contessa, it's, break it down down. Yeah. Break it down. People may not like me after I say this, but I'm not a big advocate of giving people money. I'm mm. not. So I one thing that because we do have big families. Right. Mm -hmm. And one thing I've learned to do is when people ask you for money, say, for instance, somebody comes to you for five thousand dollars. Right. I always say is going to get a, that debt is going to get in the way of that relationship. You're going to mm -hmm. lose that friend or that family member and that money. So because if they could they needed to come to you, then mm -hmm. they probably don't have it to give it back to you. So I always say, gift them what you can afford to let go of, right? Mm. And then also you've created a situation where they stop coming to you as their lifeline. So say, for instance, someone comes to me for $5,000. I'll say, you know what, well, here's $1,000. You can have it. Don't worry about it. What that does is two things. Number one, I'm not their supply, right? They're annoyed because now i got to go to someone else mm -hmm. to get the money. But if every time they come to you, you give them everything they need, why would they ever stop that cycle? Mm -hmm. So gift them what you want which you can afford to let go of, but you'll stop and break that up. So, cause we had a big problem with that in, in our life. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, joint accounts. We talked about this. Mm -hmm. That is what, so real, important. What's your philosophy? Go ahead. So important because again, compound, the power of compound yeah. interest. Synergy and in everything. In synergy. Mm -hmm. Relationships, so synergy. His debt was my debt and my debt was his mm -hmm. debt. Right. And so once we were able to 
you know, two times two was four. T four times four is 16. Mm -hmm. So once we started consolidating mm -hmm. our assets, our money grew like crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. People are sometimes a little selfish. Like, I make more money than he. Right. But then you lose your job. And you've mm -hmm. created this situation, right, where there is no mm -hmm. symbiotic, you know, symbiotic relationship. Right. I'm all about reciprocity. I don't ever want, because it's been so many times that he's made more than me, or there's a moment where I maybe had a little bonus. Simultaneous, more right. Right. same thing. Right. 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 No, no, but I'm just saying. But it, so it really created a situation where we is ours, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it also it changes our dynamic and the way right. we deal with each other. So mm -hmm. if you want your relationship to be successful, in my opinion, combine your assets. Mm -hmm. You still can have some money mm -hmm. on the side. But the bulk of your money should be. And if people are like, I don't trust him. Well, why the hell would you no, marry somebody you don't trust? trust so it's when you sleep with him, you have sex with him, you have a baby so, with him, but so, you don't trust him with so your let money? Me ask uh -huh. you, let me, let me right. ask you this. Let me <laughs> right. ask you this. So Crazy. when you say combine your assets, yeah. are you combining your assets under both your names? Or are you combining your assets under a trust? I'm thinking about are the income. I'm saying like when the checks come. Your in. income when the yeah, checks come. Yeah, I'm talking right. about. So yeah. I'm thinking about when I'm saying like when you get like direct deposit or whatever from your jobs. Like I know a lot of times people will have separate accounts. And so it's like I don't want him to know how much I make. So we have a joint. And mm -hmm. then we have separate yes, as right. well. Right. And so you're the second folks we talked to that said we need to put it all into one pool. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. We still have that's a not what you're No, saying. no, what? no. I'm yeah. saying just as far as like, for instance, your deposits from your because we have, of course, jobs and mm -hmm. you know clinics and stuff. So our income, we put it in one account, and mm -hmm. so then we'll like break. So we'll then put our investments and the money comes out of that mm -hmm. account right. to our. But there is always oversight like you know how much we have mm -hmm. there is not a lot of secrets there right. and again i don't have any concerns about the trust thing because i wouldn't have married him mm -hmm. if i didn't trust him right but financial infidelity is a big That's one so big i, big I feel you on that okay where can people find you guys what do they need to know what's next so dr contest is my instagram and um on you know all pr platforms and everything but one thing that we're doing right now um this phase of my life, in my opinion, and I say it all the time, is all about giving back, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like it's all butter, it's all bonus. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so we are really, we're looking for actually like a wellness space, mm -hmm. a place where you could essentially come do yoga, sound baths, come to the clinic, mm -hmm. you know, have rooms. Well, you can sleep there. It's almost like Miraval or the mm -hmm. different like wellness retreats mm -hmm. that you go to yep. in other countries. A woo right? moment. Absolutely, or Arizona. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna create one right here. And we just really want to, Focus on making people well, healthy, mm. safe, and strong. We just did a wellness yes, we uh, did. event this weekend yes, we for did. both of our so birthdays. Much. Yeah, that's, so then, that's part We're, of why we wanted to do this platform as well. Although it's not a wellness retreat, but sonically, for those that are listening, they're becoming well internally. That's right. Mm -hmm. You understand? We're that's educating right. mm -hmm. them by Definitely. saying what we're saying, you saying what you're saying. In a way, this is again helping them to because 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 we said. We're not experts. We no. don't know it all. No, nobody. We're learning. Mm -hmm. They're learning. Mm -hmm. And that's why we wanted to do this. All right, Dr. Scott, where can we find you? I'm Dr. Scott Metcalf, pretty much on all platforms. Mm -hmm. And our medical clinic is Chastain, uh, ChastainMed.com. ChastainMedicine.com. I love uh, that you look at her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, that is just on the website. Yep, chastainmed.com. You can download then, a song yep, on yep. all platforms. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Lost by We're gonna Dr. Be at your concert. Period Scott. We're going to have front row tickets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. You did the producce it too? Yep, yep. You did. Produced it and even did it locally, uh, mastered it at Patchwork Studios right oh. here. Oh. Yep. And he owns you know. his masters. That's right. Oh. You gotta own those masks. Got to, got to, got to, got to, we yep. appreciate you guys coming. Like such a blessing. We gotta have you back. Yeah. Yes. Oh, definitely, definitely. Thanks for having yeah. us. Um, so we like to wrap up our show with one to go on and one to grow on. Which yes. one do you want to do today, babe? <sighs> one to go on or one to grow on? I'll do the go on. Okay, go. Uh, one to go on. As I sit here and I listen to everything, one to go on for me is make sure you like your partner. Because you can be in love, fall in love, but not like that person, right? Mm -hmm. And by not liking that person, you tend to want to not be around that person. You tend to start to build up resentment because love is overused in such a way that they don't realize that like sometimes can be stronger. Mm. So make sure you like the person you love. You like me? Oh, I like you so much. <laughs> I liked it. Did I you liked it. Did you? I liked it. Did you? <laughs> All right, so I'm doing one to grow on. One to grow on. It has to do with seasons. Mm. I think there's a season for everything. Mm -hmm. It's not always a season to to harvest. Okay. Sometimes there's a season to sow. 
You know, there's a, a season to reap. There's a season to plow. Mm -hmm. And so we have to prepare ourselves to do the work for the life that we want. And if ever we look around and things are not what we want, if we wake up in the morning and this is not the life we choose to live and we don't like the results, we have to recognize that it's a direct reflection of the seeds we sowed yesterday, mm -hmm. the things we said or did yesterday. And the beauty about waking up every day is every time our feet hit the floor, mm -hmm. we got another chance to get it right, get it tight. Yes. So what seeds will we sow today for the life that we want tomorrow? See, that's why I Ooh. like you. I you like liked it? Hey. Awesome. I like you too. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's the Marriage and Money Podcast. Yes. We're Egypt and Mike. We love you. Tell somebody. <laughs>